Hi. I've been asked uh, to show somebody, or it could be anybody, how to do the under and over movements of the scroll work. Now, this type of scroll, as I've always keep mentioning, is a traditional type of English gun engraver scroll. It's, it's a bit tighter than most other scrolls. Um, maybe like Sam does, or the great American scroll. Uh, but um, I think I'll do this one, just to show you. And it's very attractive if it's done well. You can see that I've done the, the uh, backbones, all of this. And now what I'll have to do when I'm making the various leaves go under or over, I've got to erase a certain amount of uh, or a, a, an area. So this is how I'm going to do it. Now, there's a choice between making it go under or making it go over. So I've emphasized the main part of the backbone and there are areas here that are slightly lighter, but it will show you how it's constructed in the first case. You see, all, all of these scrolls are going around. Now, I'm going to concentrate slightly on the centre here. So now, shall we say we'll make this into like the starter scroll here? So we've got it here. Now, am I going to make this go, this leaf go over or under? See, now there's one up here that can go over, and maybe we may want that to go slightly different. No. We'll work it out as we go. So I'll do it in a simplified way. So now I will take this one here. What shall we say here? I think I've got something underneath here. So I'll take this, this leaf here, across here so we've got that there now see this here so that's going over this because the backbone is coming in here you see so that means to say that's going over the top so just a few little dabs of that and now that will give you the area so now this one on this side has got to come this way so now we will take this line here to give that the impression that that is going around here to make this leaf. Okay, like so. I'm not making these leaves exactly, <clears throat> um, shall we say, like I'm mean, going to engrave them because I'm using a pencil, I'm just doing a demonstration. I think I've lost my eraser thing. No, this is uh, my little bit of blue tack here that I can just dab away and just do. Now, here we go again. So this one can go across here, or I could make one go across here. Now, because this here, this side, I have this intention to make this one come across here. So shall we make... See there, I've got this one coming here. It, it's quite okay. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So it's just, this is a fantastic um, way you can design. So I'll take this one here now. So I'm going to start the, the leaves on this one here. I'll make a little bit of interesting leaf. It could be just one shape here. Yeah. I think the surface underneath here is a bit awkward. I'll put something underneath just to give me a little bit more to work on. Okay, here we go. So now I've got this. I'm going to take this one across here because that's there, see? So now that line that here was a guideline, I'm going to dab him away. And I'm going to make this the positive line. So now I'm going to do my, my work here. Yeah. 
You know, there's a big gap there, but we're not going to worry about that unduly because there's some, some of the other little things you can do. But see, I'm not taking this right from here because it'll, it'll make this a bit too weak. So I'll take it here. And I can make a larger leaf here. And I'll take this up here, like so. And that. There's so many different styles, but I'll put it here so that it makes that fairly strong, you see. It's according to exactly um, what size you're making this. I'm drawing it larger than we would actually engrave, but it is a larger scroll. So now here, to fill in that space, I could put another leaf coming this way. See? Because they're living plants. And it's to fill this gap in here so you don't need so if you cut away here you see you've got that there and you haven't got a wide space that you can't you don't know what to do anything with you see so now if i was to use that again here and i'm darkening in the background here now, now i'm coming to another one which is an over this one's going to go over this is down here so that's got plenty of room. Now, there's a, a, another method of making it swing back. It comes here and it loops. So we would take a loop here on your leaf. You see, this one can come under there. And it should be dark and that. See, it's got a little loop there. There's different engravers make different shapes. Um... Uh, but it's giving you the method of over and under, as you see. So now we've got this one here, and we're tracking it here again. All right. And we have this method here. And I could take this again. You see, when I'm drawing, I'm drawing as though I'm engraving. I don't come back. When I'm engraving, you see, if you trace everything down um, uh, you you go against the grain sometimes you come backwards onto a cut see if I'm going forward when we were engraving the guns um, <clears throat> we did it fast in a way so you had a method you go, keep going forward forward and forward all the time so your cuts went this way then this one came over here and that one went over there. And you see, I'm going forward and I'm pushing my graver forward and I'm coming this way. Now, if I'm drawing, uh, I, could, I could come back in another way, but I'm just still moving everything forward. So I'm not making the graver cut that way and cut that way in there because it doesn't make the, the shapes I, I like on engraving. It gives a different cut, a different look. Some looks rather mechanical and rather monotonous in the graving stroke. So now I'm doing it forward. See, I'm working forward, going around, and I'm climbing the ladder, as I mentioned before. I'm coming up. So if I've got a big gap there, I could take another little leaf in here, and I could make these movements here, you see, like so. And these could be shaded away. I'm doing it fast, but... Oh, yeah, I'm still. Oh my golly, I was out. Of, I was out of focus. I didn't realise. I must apologise for that. You see, I hope you were watching that. Let's see. And that's a problem when you're working. And you forget that there are viewers. Um, we're all amateurs at this. Thing. So there you are, you've got that movement, okay? I don't like this gap here, so I would have put something like this in. Here. A larger leaf if I wanted, or a little curl, little, and I could put another one in here. Because it fills in the gap. I would make it, if I had time, 
it a little bit different. I'm sorry if I keep going out here, I'm slinging it around. So now here we go, I'm turning the page around here, I'm working it this way. So now let's concentrate really on the main part, which we were talking about, is this under and over business. You see there, there's going to be a big gap there. Uh, see, this is a type, so we could put another little scroll in there, let's think, it's just, just a matter of, it doesn't take long when, on, with a pencil and that. As I said, with the graver, when we used to work, this is what we did with the graver. We didn't draw anything out, just the main backbone. And all the rest was cut with the graver as you went along, you see. So now you've got a gap here. I could take this through here and into here. And another one into there, you see. I could have brought it right up there, maybe. Oh, dear me. I'm sorry, I'm going out of focus here again. Apologies all around. Oh my, what am I doing? So now I may have to do this all again. So I'm doing that here. And I've got another one here. And I could swing it around. I'm going to do a bigger leaf here again. I'm a silly. And you're in your own little world sometimes, you forget that, that uh, I've got to keep this under the focus. There we go. See, now I'm coming around here. And I formed in another leaf there, you can see. So, this is just um, as I mentioned before, um, this is just a demo, and it's not exactly a, a work of art in its own right. So, there you can see there, I'll give you this movement here. I have to keep looking up and see as for you. I haven't made that nasty mistake I did before. Um, shut you out, and uh, it's always like those people you see in the photographs. Sometimes, isn't it? You know, you think you're in view and you're standing behind something. You can see the camera. When you see the the photograph itself, you're invisible. <laughs> All you can see is a pair of eyes, and that's. This is what I'm doing now, I can't. Uh, so I've got to make sure that you can see. So this one's going to come this way. Yeah, we always tend to think. Our point of view is the correct one. We've got to think of other people's views and how they come. Right, here we go. Uh, see now, I, I can erase this little line that's going here. See now that one's come across here. And... Uh, can work here. You see, this is um, the different type of scroll to the main, what I call the American scroll, the proper one now, that just has about two or three leaves in it. This one is typical of the English that more or less copied the English style of gun engraving, but all scrolls to a degree are, are the same pattern, so I don't think anybody can really claim it as their own. As the Greeks and the Romans did this stuff. Uh, so here we go again. Now I'm going to just show this little bit here to give the impression of it's still going under and. Yeah, yeah, I'll make this one come over here. Yeah. Right, so now I've got that here. All right, and so there's your leaf there. Let me have that down 
there. Now you've got this one here, it's going to go this direction. So we're going to show the start of this one here. We could make a little bad leaf here. Just to give it a start and to show you is that. And it's like that. And of course the pencils doing it this way are not sharp. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, out of focus again. It's, it's the nuisance, this thing. You're pulling it to so you, I could view it myself. And I'm forgetting. I'm pulling it towards me, and this thing is on the stand. All right. So now I've got that one here. So I'll erase that and emphasize this line here that's going across now like so now we're going to go here with the leaf here i may have to do this again if it's um if i have messed it up a bit maybe you'll have to ignore that well, I've made these uh, when it's gone out. <laughs> we all have to use our imagination. I don't think we're so much that you are not capable of doing these things. You know, even if I've gone out of focus, you can follow what I'm doing. If not, scream. Tell me. There we go. There's another one here. See, I can make that come there, like that. So now that's going to cross there. And this one's going to do the same. Or, I could... I could do one here. Let's, let's just give it a good go, you see. So now we... This is the fun, in some ways, of doing it. It, it makes your brain work. Um, and you don't follow it blindly you use your imagination and that's how you start designing you see so now that, that started there there and I could stop it there and I could start this scroll which is coming around here coming through here you see yeah like that and then I could bring that through here because this is your stem all the way around here so uh, my stem here, and I'm taking my leaf off here. So I'm filling in that gap there. And I'm making the leaf come here. And I'm going in in the rhythm again. You see, uh, it's, it's like that. I'm going forward with my graver. As I mentioned, we never drew anything out. It automatically fills in the space because we're going at the same one, two, the same length of stroke to a degree, maybe slightly shorter in others, but it's the same rhythm. So you work up the rhythm of going like that. I'm using the knobs on the end of uh, it's got the leaf here. Um, yeah, I'm still in. I'm still there. I've got nobody to tell me, come on, you're getting out. So now, if I was to be an Austrian or a German engraver, I would spiral this one around like that, you see. So that would be the difference. So you would get a nice, another type of effect on your scrolls. You just have to look at these various engravers and from various nationalities, they all got their own little quirk. Because we were all isolated to a degree in the old days. Um, you know, people were very conservative. They stuck to their own gun makers and their own countries, you know. And some of the English lords and that, you know, thought some of the continental stuff was a bit vulgar because it was a bit too flamboyant for them. And they stuck to a, a sort of conservative type of 
scroll work and most of the engravers weren't necessarily artists. They were artisans, they had an apprenticeship, they were taught a certain style and a certain thing and they could earn a living doing the same repetitive stuff day in, day out, year after year. Some lived a long lifetime, but a few didn't. But worked long hours. That's if they had the work, of course. Um, and we used to say, um, the gun makers never gave you a lot of money for these things. The good quality gun engravers had good quality work. But there was always that saying that some of the engraving was made to hide the bad fittings of the guns sometimes. You know, you just put a bit of engraving around if there was a gap on a lock plate or something like that. And it hid that in a way because it looked like a bit of engraving. And so the eye didn't see these things. And uh, always makes a, a weapon look personalised when you've got a little bit of something on. And the times you hear, oh, this is my granddaddy's gun. He's look, he had this on it. And that, then I look at the guns that come up and they show them on Facebook. Some of the old gun, some of the gun makers and the collectors there show some of the guns. And I see bits and pieces that I think, wow, that's interesting because I haven't seen it before, you see. And just these little nuances, little quirks that they will put in. And you can never say, even at my age, that we've learned it all. You don't. There's always something. And you may have seen me sometimes put my uh, things I manipulated. And why? I have to go, why? What the heck? I didn't realise that was there. It alters the shapes because I think it's because... Have you noticed what I'm doing? It's a one, two, three, one, two, three. It goes like that. It's a rhythm. So when we were engraving, it was a rhythm. You could hear the gravers going click, click. And if we didn't have a hammer and chisels... Uh, yeah, I, I developed the hammer and chisel for my style of work, you know, later on. It's because I came in touch with René Delcourt in Belgium. And uh, that was, uh, you could get more depth into your work. And you, Because I was doing different types of scroll, I wanted to get some body into it. It worked to the, that effect, you see. So it affects your work and it changes the style. I've never been static. I always like to see different things and to make it different. Now, when I went to the art school, because we had a uh, release to go as apprentices for, to the art school where some of the engravers teaching your engraving and came in touch with all types of engravers and banknote engravers and silver engravers and people like that. But the tutor there was, was George Friend and he was a friend of Harry Kells. And uh, I did the typical Harry Kell scroll coming around, very repetitive, and he says, oh, I think you'd do better if you varied it. Of course, that stuck in my brain. It's like you do when you're young, certain things that certain people say to you, you know, you think it's not exactly law, but it gives you a, a sort of a release of what you're doing. And so I thought, I'll introduce these different things in. And over the years, your own style develops and um, you can change. Because I hate monotony. I don't like this repetitive, repetitive stuff all the time. The English small scroll is beautiful. If you can do it well, and it's great. But I wouldn't want to do it all the time. I like variation. When you do do it, 
oh, do it to the best of your ability. And if you've got the lovely metal to work with, wow, you, know, you pay somebody to let you do it sometimes. You know, you feel like that. You feel at the end of the day when you've had some beautiful metal to work with and everything is going tickety-boo, you know, it's a lovely feeling. Contrary to that is when it is a bit of a so-and-so and it's hard and, or your tools don't seem to be working, you know. Yes, you do have a fight on your hands at times. And that's that, that's the disappointment sometimes is when um, when you're trying your best and it won't work because the metal's against you. You just cannot get the cut you want to. You know, your tool's not working right. Majority of people never don't realise this. I even find that with paper when I'm drawing sometimes, you know. Some papers are so and so with a pen and ink, you know, your nib can catch and it can um you, you always tend to think the other guy's got it easy. <laughs> No, it's always some drawback somewhere. It's, a, it's always... Um... So I think that is um, experience. You learn. You can't help it if a gun maker gives you stuff, with, which is hard, of course. With papers and things like that, you can more or less choose what you're going to work with, and what suits you. If you've got a good maker, you can stick with it for life or with certain things. Um, but uh, you never look on and say, "Oh, he's he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's having it easy because he's you know, been doing it for years." <laughs> you ask some of us about that. It's always some flying ointment there somewhere. Here we go. We're going round. I'm still rabbiting on. Oh, Americans, do you understand what rabbiting on means? It's just an old English term. When we say rabbit, rabbit and pork means talk. And the old cockney English. There we go. So I'm coming around. You see, I'm just, it, it just comes automatically. You're talking and you get these various rhythms. So, dun, dun, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's almost like dancing, isn't it? So I'll leave that there. I'm going to show you how this one goes over now. So I've got that going through. So I'm going to just say goodbye to that centre line there a bit. This may not rub out too easy. It's just a bit. So now I'm going to take this up here. Oh, we're still in light here. We're still in view. You're still with me, boys and girls. And there we go. So... I never do. I did any drawing when I was an apprentice or anything like that. You know, straight onto the bench with a graver. Didn't draw any designs out uh, there. I like drawing, but uh, it wasn't necessary. All you wanted to do was to produce the work. Sitting and drawing everything. Yeah, we don't want to do that. You could do a gun in the time you've more or less done a design. And of course, as I mentioned, I was a gun engraver, and you stuck to some ways to the patterns that you were given. And so there was no variation as such. And old Jim Jones, I was with, he started when he was 13 years old. And when I went into the army, Jim was still there, and he was in his 80s. Doing the same small scroll that they'd done for years and years, and he could hardly do any large scroll, couldn't do lettering. He did the flowers, um, on, on bouquets of flowers. So I'll put another one in there just to balance it up here. Yeah, so, so you can see how that's gone across. And uh, yeah, while we were working, as with Mr. Kellanet, we were talking all the time talking about the experiences of old times. You can still do that. You know, we didn't have music. There was no such thing as music or anything like that in the background. It was invented then. Radios and 
in the 1950s, there was austerity all around. Didn't have any central heating, we just had an old fashioned coal fire that we lit. There we are. So, cold old Victorian type of workshop we were working with. Tools were the same, old fashioned, that had been used for centuries by other people, you know. None of this um, procreate or any of the pneumatic gravers. They would have worked well, some of this stuff, I think, if we had had them. But I wonder how fast we could have worked, you see, under a magnif under a microscope. It is, to, to a degree, it's restricting. I would have loved it for all my um, finer work. But sometimes you have to be a little bit more free and easy with your movements, like with hammer and chisel and things like that. You can swing around where I feel under the microscope uh, and that you are stuck. Static to a degree. You can contradict me, because everybody masters it in their own way. And, uh, yeah. But sometimes, I look at some of the old guns. They've got their little forts in, shall we say, their scroll work, because the guy's only had a limited amount of time or a limited amount of... Um, experience but that won't look good and that's all they needed it's all the emotion I'm afraid to say most of the people that view the engraving uh, or shall we say scroll engraving or something like that don't know much about it and uh, they can't always discern between good and bad or mediocre so now we go, and you can see how it's, it's gradually coming. I suppose this video is quite long, and it would take a long time to get over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'll have to learn how to make a fast one. So here we go again. Mm -hmm. And that'll go here. Yeah. I'm going to do it fast, rapidly, just to finish it off. See, I'm going around and around and I'm following it here. Oop, oop, out. Focus. I think it's mostly done now. But I'll just give uh, finish this now, um, because I don't know how long these will go on for. But I'll do another one sometime if anybody wants to know. Okay, I'll just, just finish this one off very fast. There we are. Bye for now.